for Christmas this year, I wanted to produce something that I've been hinting about creating um, for almost a year. Maybe it's been longer. I don't know. I apologize. But I've been getting the ingredients slowly and carefully to create our own Acker Fassi inspired lip stain. Now, I've been researching different lip staining formulations and I'm starting to think that maybe I'm working a little hard. So we're going to go back to the basics and um, this will be our first version and I think it's going to be a hole in one, but I think we can make it better. Um, now this I purchased on Etsy for $25. Um, and then I spent $35 on shipping. <laughs> so for me to get this to Canada, it cost me approximately $60 Canadian. So that's a lot. So that, there's one reason that maybe if I like this product, I want to be able to make it myself. All right, because apparently if I go to Morocco, it costs me a dollar <laughs> or a pound uh, or a euro. <laughs> it's not a terribly expensive product. And so um, I have been doing some really... Um, interesting things and I have been researching and investing in containers and these little pots I had made especially by a local potter and this is made from terracotta which is I believe it's or clay it's made from clay I'm not sure this is made from clay and it's natural and it's not exactly the same as this which is a different I'm but I I, I actually went out and I found um, we have a lot of friends who celebrate the Indian tradition of Dawai, and it's a holiday that has very special significance, and one of the things people will do is they'll make little candles. And I found these little terracotta pots that I think are designed for painting and then filling with, um, with oil to make a lamp. For the festival of lights because basically devise de, de, i cannot pronounce it right i know i'm not i am so sorry for all of you, you who celebrate this beautiful holiday but it's basically celebrating light or good over evil or light over darkness so it's 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 a beautiful beautiful religious holiday and um there are a lot of people from india that have settled here in canada in our area and so a lot of their wonderful traditions are starting to um, appear in our store so i got a fancy one and it wasn't expensive either and then i've got this fancy handmade one which is a little bit closer to this shape but i find this is actually really quite large and it's a little bit clumsy and I'm always afraid I'm going to break it. I've only used it a couple of times as you can see where it's gotten wet. I really like it. Um, so we're going to see if we can recreate it. But as you can see I get it on my hands every time I pick it up. It washes off fairly easily. Um, but those are some of the things I want to improve about it. It's been in my soapy kitchen for a while so it's been picking up glitter. That did not come with it. <laughs> But um, anyway, I've been trying to think of ways to increase the amount of absorption of the pigment because it seems to be pretty superficial, like it's basically um, what we're going to do today, which is what I think this was done, uh, how this was created is by taking the Acrofasi powder in a water solution and painting it on. I think it's as simple as that because the price point would match that amount of um, work. All right, so um, it cost me um, here, I think it was 50 cents to make these, and the Acrobasi powder actually was quite a bit more because it like um, any ingredient that's not from your country, you're going to be paying a premium. And I can't make it from scratch because we don't have access to the poppies in Granada that this is made from. So this is apparently, and I went to the website, made strictly of... Granada, which is um, pomegranate fruit extract and poppy petals, so red poppy petals. So this is not a carmine, which I was thinking um, I would be using to make the lip tint because every other natural, oops, every other natural lip tint formulation out there that I've found uses carmine. And if you're interested in making lip tint with readily available ingredients, 
I would go to Marie Ramos will be in me site and she's got some really great fun um, carmine based lip tints and uh, so without further ado let's get painted let's see if we can make this see if it's as simple as I think it is if it's not then we'll go back to the drawing board but um, I have my my um, handy dandy paintbrush. We are going to measure out our ingredients though. So I did go to Marie's site and look up the amount of, um, of the carmine powder that she used. The first time I saw a lip tint created by another creator, I was at Humble Bee and Me. And so we're gonna use some of this formulation to give us a starting point. So this is a single recipe, I believe, for one. So from this, I'm going to use the same amount of dye. So instead of carmine or red lake dye, I'm gonna use the acrofasti and hopefully that will be enough. But I'm not going to add any of these other things because I just don't think that they were used in creating this. It seems to be a simple um, distilled water is what we're going to start with and see if it sticks. And if it sticks with the distilled water, that will be our first creation of an Akrafasi Moroccan style lip tint. I do have some other ingredients that I would love to improve this with, but we're going to start with the basics. So let's get started. And before I touch anything, I'm going to suit up. So there were a number of other ingredients listed in other Akrafasi um, history because I looked up everything I could about this lipstick and what the ingredients were. And honestly, um, things like rose wax came up. So I got some rose wax and other ingredients like um, pomegranate bark. So I have a pomegranate tree in my backyard and I grabbed some fresh bark. So we have some of that to try. I mean, it's, it's gone into, um, it's gone into dormancy, but it's still, you know, very fresh. I don't know. I couldn't get any kind of tint from it on my hands. Like maybe it was one of those um, mood dyes, you know, things will change color as, um, but we'll set that, that one aside for another, uh, formulation because I, I honestly think this, this may just <laughs> be all that we need. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out 0.15. These are for my yeah. small formulations and I use these for my tiny ones. Maybe I've got a tiny little dish for this. So, and little tweezers, look at the cute little thing it comes in. So that's, that's 10 grams. I'm not sure what that's for, but we've got a five gram weight on here. I really, really should read the instructions. Probably know that says 10 grams too. Anyway, let's turn it on and we'll put our little dish on there and do a tear. Now we are in grams. We're going to take this and we're going to get 0.15 is what we're going to measure out. Now, where's my tiniest little scoop? Point 0.15. Point 0.1. I'm thinking one more scoop's going to do it. One, four, point one, five, three. Maybe we'll take a little bit of that away. One five one is better than one five three. Okay. So let's move that off. Turn it off. 
Actually, we're going to leave that on. I'm going to tear this and then I'm going to add this by the drop so we know exactly how much we're using. I'm going to write this down as we go along onto our sheet of paper that we can then transfer. So we actually ended up with point one four nine, wasn't it? So that's one point five, and that's acrophacy. And that's based on Marie's carmine. Um, amounts that she recommends and we've got some distilled water here and I'm just going to add this um, by the drop. So we're going to go point two, three, seven, point two, three, six distilled water. Now I'm not going to add a preservative because we're going to dry this. This is not a wet product and even though we're using water, it's not going to stay wet. Um, because you, I mean it dries within seconds. There's something about the nature of the terracotta that wants to dry everything out. So we're going to go ahead and let that be. Now I'm going to take my sterile brush and we're going to Give that a mix. Now if this doesn't paint on and look kind of like that other one, well no, and I'm already thinking no, this doesn't look right. Because that looks more like carmine to me than And we're just going to have to pour it all on. And we're just going to paint it on like that. Now, it's not really sticking very well. So we obviously need something more. Luckily, I've brought some coconut oil and the rose wax. So we're going to go ahead and and measure some of that out. So for this tiny little bit, let's start with the rose wax. What are we going to need to bind that to make it not much, just a little bit. Let's go point one less than that. This is pretty, pretty intense wax. It's like beeswax. I want point oh five is what I want. Let's take that out. A little bit. Point oh five seven. I'm gonna go point oh five four, so I'm just gonna take another little bit off. Good. Point oh five one. Point oh five one of rose wax. Okay. Now I'm going to want twice as much of the wax, so we're going to go with point one of the coconut oil I got from Barack. We're working with tiny quantities here. This is really... Oh, 
There we go, point one. Wait a minute. There's no way that that's... Is that point one? Okay, we're going to go point two. Maybe we'll just go with the full one. Let's go with the full one. One point zero zero four. One point zero zero four. Coconut oil. Now I have seen the acar fasci kind of have a sparkle to it. Like they will add mica to it sometimes. It's treated like there's mica in that. You can see it. All right, but not quite right so we're going to warm this up um, and then we're going to paint it on okay so I'm just going to melt this down so I have scraped that off and we're going to put it in here <laughs> we are going to mix that all up And I'm going to microwave this. Okay, so I put this in the microwave for 10 seconds. And that was plenty. Hmm. You know what? The more I look at this, The more it reminds me of carmine. That looks like carmine to me. Or maybe we should try one of the lake dyes. Mix it with the acrobacy. Let me go get a lake dye. All right, so I had two ideas as I went to my, um, my cupboard, my ingredient cupboard. Iron oxide has been on the list of ingredients for lip tints, not this particular one, but um, there's a possibility to give us a more a different color. And then we've got the Red Lake FDNC, so it's got, um, it can be used in lipstick, so that should be an okay one. Now what I thought I'd do is I'd start with Start with the iron oxide, and if that doesn't give us that, then we'll add a little bit of the lake. Now that we've got an oil base here, all I'm going to do is add to it. All right, so we wanted it thick and reusable and nice anyway, and that amount just didn't seem to be enough. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to measure out. Again, referring to Marie's formulation for her lip tint, her single-use lip tint. She was using 0.15 of Carmine or Red Lake. So we're going to use 0 0.07 grams. My math is right. I'm doing this in my head. 0 0.07 grams. And add that first. We're going to start with the natural iron oxide, which I believe is also cosmetic grade. Let's get this. Hold off. And I just need to do some cleanup before we start adding additional ingredients. Okay, so we're going to measure out 0 0.074 grams of red 
iron oxide. We're nearly there already. Just, just a tiny bit more. There we go. Nope. Okay, we're gonna go with that, 0 0.074. So we're just gonna dump that in. using this as my brush so we're getting a red at least and we're getting a thick color oh I like it okay what's left is the tip test. So let's put just a tiny bit on there and let it wait, let it wait, let it wait, let it wait. See what kind of a color we get. All right, so we're getting kind of a, a brownie red tint and because my skin is almost paper white, that's not what I was going for. It, it probably would look very pretty if that's the color you want. It's also not quite dark enough. That's a very, very light tint dye. Of course, now that it's not coming off my arm very well, I know that it's going to be a lasting one. So I'm just going to clean things up and we're going to measure out 0 0.174, 0 0.074 grams of carmine and I think that's going to take us over the top or, or the red dye red lake all right so let's measure out point zero seven four red lake 40 is what I'm using right here Zero seven. Oh, that went quick. That's seven six. Let's take a little out. All righty. So I'm actually going to put this away because <laughs> dyes fly. Ah! <laughs> yeah, I just proved my point there. Luckily, it was covered. Okay, so all of that in there. Okay. No. So we've still got kind of that terracotta color, but it's got a red blush. So we will test it again and we'll see where we're at. I just want to make sure all of my ingredients are mixed really well because the next time I make this,
And I want it to coat the inside of the bowl really well. Now I knew that the coconut oil would actually soak into the terracotta. So that was expected. Now we're going to leave this one overnight and see what happens. But once again, I'm going to get as much of it off as I can. Put a little bit of that on there. See what kind of color we're getting now. That's a nicer red. I really like that. That's really nice. I am going to go try that on. And it stains nice, which is good. It's not just <laughs> my red skin. All right. So we've got our first <laughs> Acrofasi formulation so far. Um, this needs to sit and be tested, but um, the colors aren't the same. I'm thinking this is more of a carmine color, so I'm going to have to dig out my carmine for the next uh, version of this, and we shall see um, how this dries overnight, and we will test it in the morning. Okay, I'll show you my bright tinted lips. <laughs> all right, bye for now. Okay guys, well, I've been wearing this all day. I really like it. I'm going to do a reapply and I'm just going to show you how I applied it. I did do a demo and the entire time I was talking to you, I had sugar stuck right here. I'll put it in the description below. <laughs> you can just watch me with my sugar right here. <laughs> I can't stand it, so we're we, we shooting it. So I'm going to show you my sugar scrub that I made. It's a simple sugar scrub. You can make it with sugar and coconut oil, which is basically what I did. But, of course, I had to make it with uh, candy cap flavored sugar, which is kind of a maple leaf flavored delight. Um, for those of you who have been following me, I am hunting wild mushrooms in the Pacific Northwest. And I didn't find a candy cap, but I bought some. And then I took the bag that I had stored that they came in and I filled it with sugar because it's so strong. It reminded me of my uh, my vanilla sugar. Sure enough, I made a maple leaf mushroomy awesome creation. And that's what I added. A little bit of that with um, some coconut oil. So I'll show you how to use that. You just mix them together. Lick your lips. And a high. Okay. Now what that's going to do is going to get all that old skin off. Now hopefully, this time I'll get all of the sugar on my face. Um, but I do have enough supplies to make quite a bit if you want one. And I am giving one away for free to my very special subscriber who stuck with me and asked me to continue to, to research this to see if we could bring a little bit of Morocco into North America and I have done it I think and I'm gonna be doing more with these we're gonna be doing okay sure I don't have it like hanging off my cheek <laughs> and we're gonna apply a little bit of this um, this product now I made two colors so I have my original and then the one that is more like the one I got from Morocco so this is the one like Moroccan but again, my light is doing the strangest things because this one looks dark. So let me hold these up. See how it looks like. Right. Now we're doing the same thing. So these are actually the same color. They are. I promise. I'm not lying. Um, and they look kind of terracotta from my perspective. <laughs> but my the light or whatever's going on here is 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 doing funny things. So keep that in mind. So we've got the two colors which is hard to explain okay, I'm gonna hold them this way and then I'm gonna swap them this one is a brighter lighter color this one is a darker color so this was the first one that you saw 
I'm going to do another demo with the other one so you can see how that one was made and the combination of dyes and pigments that I used because I think it's helpful to just start thinking about the balance of your reds and your colors to, to give you something different. So let's see my swatches. This is all dye. So the dyes are going to give you a longer lasting, this is two days old. So my husband thought I had bee stings on my hand. This is the first one. This is the one you saw, saw today. So it actually has pretty good staying power. This one stays longer. All right, so I'll show you that one next time. Um, and as I create and try different oils on the terracotta, we will be formulating. And I hope you enjoyed this exercise in watching me how to formulate because it'll show you that you can do it too, that you can just start with an idea of something and use your knowledge from what you've read, what you learned in the past about those formulations to get you started and to not be afraid to try something new because formulating is really fun. <laughs> and sometimes you, you don't succeed, but sometimes you hit it out of the park. And I hope that um, you enjoyed watching me make this Moroccan styled Akrafasi um, lip tint. And I'm just going to apply it one more time because I'm in love with it. I really, really am. So we're just going to take some off of my brush here and I'm going to wet it in the water. Um, and I'm going to put it on my finger because there's way too much. See how that this, this is probably enough lip tint to last me weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. So we're, we're you know, this is that's really cool. The Moroccans know where it's at. You guys rock. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you can see that, I hope you um, give this a try and... Start playing with your dyes if you're interested in different kinds of lip tints. I actually have some other ingredients coming to um, to work with this idea. I like the fact that it's not in a bottle. It's completely, you know, <laughs> if you're using um, natural dyes like Carmine, um, which we haven't actually used yet. Uh, it's awesome. It's, it's just awesome for, um, from that perspective too. I mean, I am a um, huge fan of colorants. I love color and flavor and fragrance and all that stuff. But <laughs> if you are a purist, there's possibilities here and that's, that's pretty exciting. So if you enjoyed this, please click like and subscribe. Please come on back. Have a very happy holiday and, um, I hope your Christmas was wonderful for those of you who celebrate Christmas and for those of you who are celebrating all the other holidays, Kwanzaa, Ramadan, um, uh, Hanukkah, happy, happy holidays to everyone, wherever you are in the world. Um, thank you. Bye for now.